Hi, it's Nikki. I'm a holistic health coach and esthetician. And today I want to talk to you more about facial cupping and do a facial cupping treatment so you can see how easy it is to, to use it at home. Now, facial cupping is about creating negative pressure in the skin. It basically pulls the tissues apart and allows for increased blood circulation. It helps to decrease fascial adhesions. It basically increases more space within the skin to allow lymphatic flow and blood circulation. And by decreasing fascial adhesions and reducing tension in the skin, we help to recreate new patterns of growth within the skin that you can then help to lift and tone. There's several different types of ways, actually two different ways of doing facial cupping. And I'm going to apply some oil to my skin to show you. So this oil is by the facial cupping expert. Love her, love her classes, uh, love her products. I'm gonna just use some oil on my skin and show you some two different techniques. The first is flash cupping. Now with flash cupping, you basically create suction and then just pull off. And then there's dynamic cupping where you create suction, slide, and then pop off. So flash cupping and dynamic cupping. There's two different types of cups generally that you can use. You can use glass cups or you can use silicone cups. Um, I like using these because they're easy to clean. You can get your hand down at the bottom to create that suction. Whereas with glass cups, you're squeezing a bulb and moving it along. It's a little harder to use. So I really love using these cups. And these are also by the facial cupping expert. I wanted to make sure that I addressed a few things though first. With facial cupping, um, you don't want to use facial cupping if you have Botox in the area, because by doing the facial cupping, you're actually going to decrease that Botox pretty quickly. You don't want to do it on open winds, uh, open wounds, or skin that has lesions or sores, recent cancer, recent facial surgery, um, any place where you might have burns, um, and multiple exposures to like cold and hot because we're really opening up the pores when we're doing this and increasing circulation. So it's gonna make, make your skin more vulnerable. After cupping, you don't wanna go out into a windy day. You don't want to get into a hot or cold shower. You want to avoid putting makeup on for about six hours. And so that's why it's best to do facial cupping at night before you go to sleep. With facial cupping, you want to start out slower with a little bit less um, pressure and then build. So if you're someone who's prone to more redness, maybe a little more sensitivity, use less pressure. Now to get going with it, you want to do it more often at first. So for the first week, you wanna do it every night. After that, the next week, do it every other day. And then the third week and on, just do it once a week. Personally, I like setting aside Wednesday nights and Saturday nights to do my facial cupping. So let's get started. What, are, what do you need to do to prep your skin in order to get ready for facial cupping? So you want to do it on clean skin. I like to apply all of my serums and then even my moisturizer. Then I apply my prickly pear seed oil from the facial cupping expert. And you wanna be very generous with that as well. Now, before I hop right into facial cupping, I like to start with a little bit of manual lymphatic drainage stimulation. So we're gonna start with right here at this area called the temporalis, just above your clavicle, and just down, directly down from the side of your ear. We're gonna just use very light pressure, kind of the, the amount of pressure that you would use if you were pushing a quarter across your skin, that light. So we're just gonna go for like 10 motions. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, and 10. Now we're going to work the nodes down the side of the face. So just, you're almost just like moving the, moving the skin without really moving your hands across it. For 10, so we're now 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now we're going to use little spot fingers and get them right up underneath the ear. And we're going to stimulate those nodes. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And finally, we're going to take our two fingers and move lymphatic fluid above and below the jawline for ten. It's important to move lymphatic fluid because we want the lymphatic fluid to move and if any of the areas are blocked up to there, you're not going to have draining from the face. So we start here because this is where everything eventually goes into your veins, then here, then here, then here. And then now the rest of the face can flow down into those areas. All right, I'm going to apply about a dropper full, 10 drops or so of oil in the areas where I'm going to be cupping. And you can add more as you get through this if you find the cups are slipping. That's the biggest thing that I can say is you find that the cups aren't moving across the skin well, just add more oil. All right, so the first area that we're going to start with is just stimulating your terminus. So we're just gonna go one, two, three, flash cupping. And then we're gonna come down to where our thymus is and we're going to go one, two, three, and then dynamic cupping over to our axillary nodes. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, and three. All right, now we'll stimulate this side. One, two, three, one, two, three. Dynamic cupping over. And I like to start a little bit lower on the chest and work up, going about a half an inch higher each time. One, two, three, one, two, three. All right, now we're gonna come back over to this terminus and do a little more stimulation. We're gonna work down the neck area. Now on this area, if you're just getting started, let's just do three pops down behind the neck there. And then we'll come over to the jawline. One, two, three. That's the way that you'll want to start. Eventually, you can work up to a more advanced place and do one, two, and three down, and one, two, three across. Now, when we're doing this, we want to make sure that we're right below the ear and that we only take it over to the angle of the nose, or I'm sorry, the angle of the jaw. So, what does that look like? Like this, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And we'll do it two more times. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, now we'll work the other side. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Two more times. All right, 
Now, now we can work the top of the jawline. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to bring it up through here. We'll start low, just below the nose and work over, step it up just a little higher and then just a little higher for three sets. Now, if you start to see a lot of redness, just do one set or maybe two sets. And this is where you're really wanting to look to make sure that you're not creating too much pressure as you're doing the dynamic cupping. This is also where you wanna make sure you have plenty of oil on your skin. So here we go. One, two, three. In the beginning, when you're facial cupping, you might find that the cups come off because you have a lot of fascial adhesions in through here. Add more oil, decrease the number of passes. I'm gonna do it one more time. All right, now, we're gonna go up to the forehead. Flash cupping on the temporalis here, and then flash cupping, or I'm sorry, dynamic cupping up through the forehead. And we are splitting it. One, two, three. One, two, three. Working our procerus and our uh, corrugator muscles right in through here, and then across the forehead to reduce fascial adhesions and relieve tension in this area that we keep so much tension. One, two, three. Now you never really need to go more than three passes. And if you need to work your way up, that's fine. Okay, now we're gonna work the other side. And you can see my skin is getting a little bit more red. That's great. Increased blood flow and circulation in through there. Fantastic. All right, now, other side. cupping up through here, you will find that it might be losing suction in through here. The more you do your facial cupping, the more this will become more flexible with the cups. So just, just work it. If you lose suction here, just come back and finish it off. So one, two, three. And I can't lost track, so one, two, three, do one more. All right, so that's just the regular cupping for the face. And now we'll come back and do a little bit of cupping for just more tinier areas that we wanna give a little bit more attention to. So for me, I like doing the upper lid because that helps with the um, hooded eyes, and then it can help with puffiness and dark circles under here. Love working my lips as well. So we're gonna do one side and then the other. So we'll go one, two, three, one, two, three. Now, just above the lip area. One, two, three. Then flash cupping. Dynamic cupping. And I'm halfway over that vermilion border and halfway onto the skin or onto the lip. 
I found doing this has really helped the health of my lips and my lip line to be more expanded and precise. Oops. One, two, three. They hold a lot of tension up in this hooded eye area. And so doing that flash cupping helps to release that tension. When I first started doing facial cupping, I could never keep the cups on that upper left lip. But now I can. All right. Now, a few other areas that you can work on that might be of interest to you. The 11s, if you want to take a small cup and just do some dynamic cupping along those lines, no more than three. I also like to take it up through the nasolabial folds and through any marionette lines, just doing some small work with the small cup, dynamic cupping. And there you have it, facial cupping. Um, let's see, is there anything else I wanted to talk about? Um, oh, how to wash these. You can just wash these with a gentle soap and let them air dry. Uh, if you get your cups through the Facial Cupping Expert, which I love, it comes with a little brush to clean the cups. I use the prickly pear seed oil, which I think is fantastic. I think it also has wonderful benefits for pigmentation and really helps the glowiness of your skin. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Make sure that you like and share this video, subscribe to my channel, and check me out over on Instagram Nikki, N-I-K-K-I underscore R underscore face it. Have a great day.